Um, welcome, good morning, happy Sabbath, all those things that I'm supposed to say while I'm up here. But I do have a question for you this morning. And my question is this. Do you wish you were somewhere else this morning? <laughs> now, let's make sure you just understood my question. I didn't just ask if you wished you were not at church this morning. That's not what I ask. <laughs> what I really asked was this. Do you wish you were in church somewhere a little farther south this morning? Well, before you wish too much along those lines, I want to show you a picture. Okay, take a look at the screen here, if you would. Now, you may not, I don't care if you can read the sign, that's not, that is not what's important. But if you look carefully at the sign, you will see that there are icicles hanging off of it. All right, and if, if, if it was a little better picture, you would see that there is ice on these trees. All right, and if you were to expand the picture a little bit, you would see that there would be palm trees in the picture here, right? And on those palm trees, there would be ice hanging from those trees as well, which is a very unusual sight. I just want you to know, two days ago, my wife took this picture in Florida. All right, so today, if you were wishing you were in church, but a little farther south, you better think something like South America or something like that, because this Arctic draft or Arctic downturn of the polar winds, it has gone pretty far south, even though I will admit, while well, my wife and I were visiting our son in Florida, we did have some really good <laughs> weather as well. We are glad you are here this morning. I hope you enjoy the service. May God bless you as you worship with us this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to be in your presence now on this first Sabbath of a new year. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings, as well as the many privilege we, privileges we have of knowing you and your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that today and this time that we spend in worship, you will draw us close to yourself, that we may reflect you more fully to the world around us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm. Good morning. Our first song is number 27, Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart.
Our next song is number 465, I Heard the Voice of Jesus. for our opening hymn, number 332, The Cleansing Wave.
Good morning. Good morning. One thing about the beginning of the year is for many organizations it involves taking inventory. For businesses, uh, you see people taking inventory, understanding what stock is there, looking through their finances, uh, taking evaluations of exactly where their corporation or their individual business stands. In a personal way, we do the same thing in our own lives when we're uh, busy helping the IRS by filling out our own forms and taking care of those kind of things, looking at last year and taking some sort of inventory of ourselves. At the beginning of this year gives us a really nice opportunity to do the same thing from a spiritual level. And that's what happened in the Hebrew calendar when the Day of Atonement came along and reminded people that it was important to take inventory of their lives and to account for that through the Day of Atonement. The same is true for you right now. You get an opportunity now to look back at the last year, at 2017, that's behind us, and to make a determination from a fiscal standpoint, um, were you a faithful steward? How was your stewardship last year? And do you have an opportunity to improve on that this year? And that's what we get as an opportunity to start brand new this year and to consider that as you're making out your systematic giving plan for the year of 2018. Uh, we would ask that you would consider that. Today's offering, loose offering, is for a local combined budget. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of serving you in any and every capacity, Father. In every way, whether we're walking through this door and smiling, shaking hands, we're serving you. And by placing these offerings in the tithe envelope uh, and putting them in this basket, Father, we are serving you. We ask that you will bless that in the way that you want it to be blessed. We ask that you'll help us as we make our plans for this next year. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I see some children in the sanctuary, and it'll be nice to see them as they gather their baskets at the front and the back of the room, and then uh, collect the offering that we use for our elementary school, and bring that to the front for a special kid's story. Thank you.
Okay, good morning, everyone. The Happy New Year to all of you, to the whole church, really. It's our first Sabbath. Today I'm going to tell you a story, sorry. Today I'm going to tell you a story that came from a long, long time ago, and it's a very serious story. Do you guys know what serious means? Does anybody know what serious means? Is something that's life or death, is that serious? Yes? Can you give me your most serious face? Marianella's giving me a pretty serious face. Oh, she broke it. <laughs> serious, very serious, life or death. This story is about a group of people called the Walden Seas. You guys ever heard of the Walden Seas before? Some of you probably have. Some of you may have heard the story, but I just love the story. It's about a little girl named Amanda and they lived in the mountains, the Alps, in the northern part of Italy. Now, the reason why this story is so serious, the title of the story is called, If We're Caught, It Means Death. That's pretty serious, right? If we're caught, it means death. Now, Amanda was a little girl about six or seven years old. And the thing that was really cool about the Walden Seas is that they believed in memorizing the Bible. Does anybody in here memorize your memory verse? A few of you, they memorized their memory verses, but they didn't just memorize one memory verse a week. They would memorize whole books of the Bible as kids. And some people had even maybe the whole Old Testament and, or the whole New Testament memorized, which is really cool. Now, there was one small problem. The small problem was that at that time it was illegal, it was against the law to even have a Bible. Who has a Bible at home? Would you go to jail to keep your Bible? Would you die to keep your Bible? If you had a Bible in your home at that time, you could go to jail, or if you were caught, it meant death. Now one day, Amanda was with her mom, and her mom was kneading the bread like she usually did. Her dad was far away, he was traveling, he was a salesman, and she was learning her memory verses with her mom. While her mother kneaded the bread and kneaded the bread, the oven was nice and hot, and then all of a sudden, it happened. They heard hoof prints coming, and they only had enough time to look through the window, and then the door burst open. And do you know who was there? Two soldiers. And did they say good morning? No, they did not. They were there on a mission because they had heard somebody had a Bible in this house. Now, if they were caught with a Bible, what did it mean? It meant death. Now, their Bible was laying open on the table. And the soldiers said, where is it? And Amanda froze. She didn't know what to do. She looked at her mother. She was frightened. And she looked at her mother, and her mother looked calm and peaceful. As she slid the bread into the oven, she said, what are you looking for? We heard there's a Bible in this house. And if there is, we're going to find it. And if it's here, you're going to die. Amanda looked where the Bible had been on the table, and it was gone. Where was it? They said they were going to search the whole house until they found that Bible, so you'd better give it up now. Now, Mother, calmly, said to the soldiers, I don't know where you would have heard that we had a Bible, but if you search this whole house, you're not going to find it. They searched everywhere. They threw the clothes out of the closets. They upturned the furniture. They even looked in the oven, the hot oven, where the bread was baking. They tapped on all of the floorboards to make sure there wasn't any secret hiding places. They tapped the walls. They checked the ceiling. They looked everywhere. And eventually, frustrated, with a sigh, they gave up and they left. Now, Amanda was confused because Mother had taught her that you should never lie. Had Mother said that there wasn't a Bible in the house? She did not. 
She said, you will not find a Bible in this house. Amanda couldn't wait to ask her what had happened to that Bible. There wasn't time to hide it. Mother calmly said to Amanda, you'll find out when your father gets home. So Amanda waited and waited. She did her chores, and when Dad came home, she set the table. The mother had taken the bread out of the oven, and it had cooled. And then she set the bread on the table, and what do you think she did? She cut one loaf of bread up and put it on the table on a plate for dinner. And the other loaf of bread she took and she began to break it open. And guess what was inside? The Bible, completely unhurt. Now, the Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. The Lord wants us to put his word, not in a loaf of bread, but where? In our hearts. Would you be willing to die to have God's word in your heart? Now that's pretty severe, that's pretty serious. But someday it may get to that point that we have to make a decision to stand for the Lord even if it means death. And I pray that if you put, when you put your memory verses in your heart now, that it will help you to stand when it really matters. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, we ask, Lord, that you would bless each child here today. Help us, Father, to put your word in our heart, to be faithful in memorizing scripture so that we can stand when the troubled times come. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. wanted to make sure and not miss this opportunity to the second reading that's listed in the bulletin, and that is a transfer out for Stephanie Smart to the Lethrop Community Fellowship SDA Church in Lethrop, Michigan. Um, if anybody would like to make a motion, I'd entertain that. Okay, so moved. A second? Okay, several. Uh, all those in favor, raise your hand. And any opposed? Thank you very much. Um, if you'd join me, we could kneel now and have our family prayer together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the comfort that you bring to us every day. Even in the midst of this cold, cold winter, Father, here we are in a, in a building that is uh, dedicated to you and to your purpose, and it's warm inside, Father, and we thank you for that. Father, we've uh, had the blessing in many cases of being with family or communicating with family over the holidays, and we're grateful for that as well, Father, and remembering the tremendous gift of your son over this special season. But Father, our hearts are also thinking about people who don't have it as well as we do right now. We're thinking of people who are um, maybe cold or hungry, Father, and we pray that you will be with them. Find a way for us to minister to them. Father, we also ask that you be with those in our community that we know who are ill and not doing well. I ask that you be with uh, Martha Williams and also uh, David Hack, Officer Hack, um, we just ask that you be with these families as well and strengthen them in these times. Father, we ask that you will um, put your arms of love around each one of the members of our community, uh, around our students who will be traveling back over the next day or so. And Father, help us to uh, find our way and an opportunity in this new year to rededicate our hearts and our minds to you and to focus on spending time daily in your word. And we ask for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our 
Our scripture reading this morning is 2 Timothy 4, 1 to 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be in, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having reaching, itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. <clears throat> 